What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Whiskey, Web, and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and Charles William Carpenter, the eighth. The eighth. Yes, I am replicating myself. I'm using AI to replicate myself. I was say, are you really the <laughs> Henry the eighth, I am, I am. No, I'm the third, which is good <laughs> also, I think. Yeah, I did not do a fourth. I elected to shut it off. I did name my daughter Charlotte, though, which is an ode to without being quite so direct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And she's good it. most of the time. I love Too bad it. that most band isn't. Same. Yeah. Good Charlotte. More good. like you don't bad like Green Day. Charlotte? Whoa. More like bad Whoa. Green Day. Shots fired. That's right. I well, saw them live I... like a few years ago. We can oh, get into that a later. Few... Yeah. You wasted good money on that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm not the uh, only do you carpenter want to here. Yeah. Introduce yourself for yeah. anyone who yeah. hasn't heard yeah, previous episodes. Yeah, I'm going to try to put myself on mute because it's uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a craziness at that the house today. But uh, yeah, it's good to have it's good to I was I was going to podcast host mode. It's good to have you boys back on. It's not my podcast; it's your podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we're <laughs> it's, you. great. Yeah, thing. it's 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 really good to be back on, guys. Um, thank you for inviting me on for round two. The whiskey was so good the first time that you know I was like, hey, why don't why don't we do this again? So. Mm. Um, but for those of you who do listen, um, mainly my mother, probably, um, and maybe y'all's mothers um, and wives. No, um, my mom does not bother. <laughs> uh, so my name is Taylor Destin. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. I do not like country music at all, but I'm very excited about Post Malone's new release with Morgan Wallen. That's going to be a doozy. But yeah, I've been a recruiter, a connector of people now for about 13 years. Spent 12 years in the traditional staffing agency since, moved over to the talent marketplace side, which is... In my opinion, kind of recruiting 2.0, but with gun.io, I think it's I think it's a really cool product, what we're building, and uh, we really kind of put the power back into the hands of hiring managers and job seekers when it comes to the job search, so very happy with that. I help run all things content and community at gun.io, so here we are. Yeah, this episode is brought to you by gun.io. They just don't know it yet. Yeah. I'm just going to get By the time it airs, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shoot our shot. Uh, all right, yeah. fellas. Let's let's talk about whiskey first. You know, yeah. that's tell the, us the about first that W Tennessee whiskey we got there. Wow. Yeah. So, did y'all specifically send me something from Tennessee on purpose? It was that yeah. like, okay. Yeah. That's, yeah. Cool. that's, cool. that's right, y'all. So, today's whiskey is called Sweeten's Cove. This is their 22 Tennessee blended bourbon. I can't, I don't think I can keep that going the whole time. It's 114 proof. It is a blend of 10, 8, 6, and 5 year bourbons. And then they are finished in a Speyside Scotch cask. So it was an interesting mix there, I would say. Ooh, you know what? I, I've, I've already failed yeah, some so of like my pro Yeah, so like on the nose, are we do a little, little sniffy sniff? Yeah, go ahead. You, yeah, you yeah. talk while I get my glass out, please. If we tried to do this last week when I had a cold, it would not have happened. Yeah. I couldn't smell anything. Yeah. You would have been like, it's smells like, like boogers. It's got a flavor. Like, like there's got a flavor on the back end that it smells so good. And I'm trying to like pull it from my brain. I am part To me, I'm what? getting creme brulee and toasted marshmallows. Oh, shit. It's pretty tough. Ooh, definitely toasty um, something. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I'm getting burnt honey. Hear me out here. So basically, mm. there is a coffee shop here in Nashville called Elegy. They do a burnt honey latte, and it mm. is decadent. And 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 that's what that's what it kind of smells like. The burnt honey. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, I can definitely see where like maybe you go down the burnt honey path or creme brulee, like a toasty Ooh. sugar. Definitely has, yeah. It's, it's, got, got, a little, it's got some packing a punch. Yeah, it's kind of like for hair on fire a little bit in the back. Of <laughs> is your uh, yeah. is your hair going to turn red now? No, but I am getting a color tomorrow. So just, oh, okay. not that y'all yeah. care. But oh. I mean, it's good to know your schedule, where you're going to be. Terrorists. We <laughs> yeah, don't yeah, live yeah. stream, so I don't know. Yeah, we should do that though. Y'all should live stream. Live stream is where it's at, but that's a whole so. Sure, sure. Yeah. I mean, it could be this conversation once we talk about whiskey some. I like it. It's good. Uh, I, it's good. I'm going to be honest. Uh, the stuff you sent me last time was really 
I don't think it beats that. Do you remember I what I it was? That really high. I, I have know. to go look yeah. at it. I can't. I'll, I forget what the last green one was. Bottle. It's a green yeah. bottle. It's helpful. This one, compared to the last Sweetens Cove we did, which was like my favorite bourbon I've ever had. Oh, for this real? This one is much less good. <laughs> much less. Not that. <laughs> is yeah. it? Yeah, it's real sweet. It's got a lot of sweet. It's got a little bit of like mossiness to it, and then it's mm. packing the yeah, heat. Yeah, the mossy. Yeah, that's yeah, I think the scotch of, stuff mouth, on them. My mouth tastes like I lick like a riverbed right now. Right, yeah. which you which do is sometimes. Not a desirable you, thing. No, when, don't you give do me that some when you, more of that riverbed <laughs> mossy flavor? <laughs> yeah, that that's when you go out frog gigging or whatever you know yeah. you all do for fun. You, which, by the way, like you probably do that in Colombia. So I was telling the boys this before we press record. So my wife and I were actually looking at buying a farm in Colombia. So Colombia, for those of you. It is it is about an hour south of Nashville. So it'd be almost two hours south of us where we're at. So we're oh, forty five minutes see. north of Nashville. North. And so, so Columbia's beautiful, that. rolling hills, uh, very kind of Kentucky esque, I guess you could say. Um Shut big your horse dirty farms mouth. Down there. Shut your dirty mouth. <laughs> okay. Don't you Anyways. dare try and <laughs> That's where I was at you. I was born. Yeah, that's oh, you, you know. Were born Okay. Yeah, I'm. I grew up in northern Kentucky, across from did Cincinnati, really? and nice. I. I think we already talked about this, right? We did. We talked about this yeah. once, and cool. then of course yeah, I would go great. down. Uh, growing up, I had a friend who had a horse farm, and they raised yeah. racehorses, and then of course you go down yeah, Lexington, yeah, yeah. Or Louisville, or whatever. So very pretty, very pretty. Yeah. So that's Columbia's a, beautiful. It's a bold Columbia's statement. Beautiful. That's all I'm saying. Like Columbia's it's beautiful. beautiful. It's got all the hipsters are moving down there, and and they've turned mm. kind of like the uh, AKA elder millennials now. And they've kind of turned the town square that was downtown into this like really cool, like eclectic, like you kind of get the old town square vibe, but all the stores are like really cool. So it's it's, yeah. it's a really great vibe. If you ever get to Nashville and have a car, I would recommend spending like a day in Columbia. Okay. Yeah. I've been to Franklin and then of course Nashville. Well, Franklin's yeah, gorgeous, kind of, but yeah, Columbia's yeah. another 45 minutes south of Franklin. I mean, Columbia's deep south, deep south for sure. I see. Nashville. All right. Well, let's. Let's let's put a little bow on this this whiskey Good, not discussion. Great. Good, not great. Not right. great. All right. Well, six where are ten? you on the tentacles scale? I think I mean I think six, six. Okay. Six, seven, six and a half. Six and a half. Six is very generous for something good, not great. I think, but I mean, in your mind, you you know categorize it as you see fit, good sir. But in general, it's not bad. It's not bad. No. Yeah. So that's would. why I said six and. A half. Six. Okay. I'll go six. Robert? Yeah. I'm going to give it a, so actually a four, I think, because Dang. I think it was pretty pricey too. And like for it, it to was. be not the best for being pretty pricey, I'm like, eh, no, screw that. So that's, we'll give it a four. That's an excellent point because I do like to compare like quality appeal for value kind of thing. I, I, I don't think I was going to go that low. I think I was I was going to kind of say five. I do believe it was like yeah. 150 maybe, or give yeah. or take, something like that. Or it was more. One of their I, I can't remember. Words. $150, yeah. $200. It was a pricey one. That's how much we value, Taylor. Sure. Return <laughs> guests, you get upgraded each time, you know. Ask Ken. Ken got an upgraded one each time you come back and, I love it. you know, knock yeah. it Until out of the park for us. The, uh, Two hundred and eighty three thousand dollar one or whatever it was. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Then you know, that's slightly That'd out of be our all budget. Thousandth episode. We'll just yeah. what we <laughs> what we need to do was actually just show up for an episode at Robbie's house where he has like the rhetoric collection of like what is it? It's like right behind twenty two yeah, the lit up thing behind him that we've been waiting to do in person someday. And it's like the twenty two to the twenty six year old or something. Mm -hmm. And yep. so we can we can we gotta we gotta invite Wheeler to that because I think I'm you both... know what? Listen, I I will say this: if that ever happens, I will I will fly in and like I will make it work. If we could get a bunch of us talking head nerds together, yes, and just get weird, that would make for some <laughs> epic content. That would make for yeah. some epic content. I think so too. So yeah, we'll have to put that on the perspective calendar. We've been That'd be pretty sick. Yeah. I don't know what. Maybe we can pick an episode number or something and do it. That would be great. Anyway, so given those uh costs and it's 
it's not terrible. It's not amazing. I'm going to keep sipping on it, maybe add a couple of drops, but I would say that like it lacks a range and it's a strange mix between very sweet to that kind of mossy flavor for me. So I'm, I'm, I'm still going to land at four and a half. If it was cheaper, it probably would go up a little bit, like okay. interesting. But I would tell people, like Robbie said, if you see a Sweetens Cove, actually buy their their normal expression. It's very good. Yeah. There you go. Hello. You got to get that or what? I heard a doorbell. <laughs> anyway i hear like some random noises on this episode yeah with everything it'll be fun the house. yeah totally. is that the power turning back on to the doorbell no, no that's <laughs> the, that's just my front door sensor and or, mm. or oh, downstairs okay. sensor and my father-in-law's working in that so it's going to be like in and out all the time so i'll, yeah, I'll, I'll try to mute myself the best i possibly can yeah it's you know, all right we allow for life yeah we've had much worse audio things so not a problem mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> If we could just get you in a basement in Finland, then I think it probably would make it better. Um, no, no, and he that, was on a on a porch, I think, like a outside. I don't know. It was bad. Charles, I've told Charles <laughs> yeah. about bad bad audio quality, but yeah. he was oh, no, yeah. he was in a basement in Finland. That was a basement. For some reason, it looked that, like a porch. Yeah, it was quite dark. Anyway, yeah, it wasn't wasn't the best setup. Half of it was audio, and half of it, that's why. Like when Robbie sees, and me too, when I when I see the AirPods and I'm like, especially as a mic, totally fine as your headphones. Yeah. As a mic, you get like a strange echoey setup. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, for sure. I mean, who are we to demand high quality? I have no idea. <laughs> but that said, you know, it can be distracting. That's all. Yeah. Anyway, so... Chuck tried to generate a bunch of hot takes with AI, and it's like a wall of text. So instead of that, I wrote a few questions I myself. I, I am going to still bring some of them up just because I, I feel at some point we're going to talk about AI. And sure. so it'll just be a great example yeah. of me putting in one simple prompt because every product is introducing AI as part of their, their thing. Yeah, but AI. Yeah, but AI. And most of it is fucking mid, and I think this is probably another Correct. example. But sorry, Robbie, please proceed. No, no, I'd, that's, I agree. We can get into that probably very shortly. But uh, I did want to talk about some of the things of the day that continue to be themes, like RTO is a big thing still with every company. How much of a mistake was that? Or do you think, like, you know, what what is the right way to do this? And are they doing it for any sort of right reasons? Uh, I think... Return to office is definitely a slippery slope, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're in, we're in a run right now where companies have the leverage again. Like, let's just call it what it is. I, I you know, companies know that there's a good gazillion job seekers out there that if somebody doesn't want to return to office, they can obviously use that as a way to get that person out. And obviously they can go find a person who wants to be on site more likely than not now. How, however, my my concern with that is is the long term detrimental kind of the I'm trying to come up with words here the the detriment to the culture long term, right? Mm -hmm. Because what happens is is if you want to bring people on site, it, it, you're you're going to jerk people around right now, right? It was it was hey we're remote we're remote, and then all of a sudden it's like no you're in office like that's. That's not what I signed up for. That's a complete 180, and you're already eroding trust, right? I mean, I I will give a shout out to my last company. They were a billion dollar company. They were like, "Hey, we said we're remote, and we're gonna stay remote, and and you can come into the office if you want." I think that's the way to do it. I think if you're gonna do a return to office, I you got to do it where people aren't sitting on fucking Zoom calls next to each other. Yeah. Like that's that's what I have an issue with, right? It's like, hey, we're gonna bring people in, but Larry can't be here because he's got a baby coming, and then Susan can't be here because she's sick, and then Tiffany can't be here because yada yada, and then all of a sudden we're all on Zoom calls, right? And it's just well, like it's like that doesn't make any sense. And that's horseshit because Larry's not even having the baby. So just show yeah. up, Larry. Come into the house, you know, Damn, come into Larry. the office. Get yeah. it together. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's so yeah. typical Larry to use any life event. <laughs> yeah, Larry just to get out yeah, Lawrence, Come on, man. Yeah. Right. So like I Yeah. So for me, it's it's one of these things. So 
it's it's challenging. So so my my last company I was at, we they they pushed a little hard to bring people into the office there at the very end. And and for us, it's like, well, again, so and so lives in Kentucky on the team. Mm-hmm. So are you going to make so and so from Kentucky come down here? And so basically, I'm I I think I like what Gun IO does. Like what what we're kind of averaging right now is once a quarter we bring in a team, right? So last quarter was the marketing team. I think the sales team is coming in this quarter. I think the following month it's going to be the ops team. And then the following month's going to be the engineering team, right? So we have like four or five teams each quarter you bring in a team. Yeah. I think that's great because it was really nice. Like we were in the office for two or three days with Gun. I was next, you know, kind of working with the marketing team on some, uh, you know, objectives for 2024. It, it felt good, you know, dinners and it was just great, right? But I think to get people into the office three or four days a week, I think is I, I I think unless you start a company now and that's your policy, I the I the toothpaste is out of the tube. And I don't know if mm. y'all have tried to put toothpaste back in a tube, but it's next to near impossible. And so it seems like you should just buy a new tube. You, you know? should just yeah. yep. my point exactly. Right. <laughs> right. And so yeah. and, and yeah, so I, I, I think intentional time on site where you carve out three days, two days on site, and it's very intentional and you get 99% of people there, I think that's how it's done. Yeah, yeah. I think that's I, like a very good point that if people aren't there that you work with, it's kind of defeats the purpose. Like Amazon's and policy resent, is just- And resentfulness yeah. comes in and it just is a downward spiral. Yeah, it's just like a blanket, like everyone be in the office three days a week, but then it's like, okay, well, all of my team is on the West Coast. So like there are a couple other people in my org that are like kind of near me and I kind of talk to them sometimes. So like there's that little bit of culture improvement. However, there's because we're forcing everyone to come back to the office, there starts to be more and more people on those Zoom calls and other shit around that are disrupting me. We just have a big open area with everyone talking nonstop and I can't focus. So I'm just like, well, if you guys are too loud, I'm going to I badged in for the day. I'm just going to go home and work like Mm. (laughs) <laughs> right. Well, you, and you that leads, your box. yeah. I mean, and again, I mean, that was to another thing. Like there at the very end, at the last company I was at, like I had more people come to me and say, hey, "Taylor, I hate going to the office because I just talk all the time. I don't get any work done." Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, like realistically, like I look back and I've told so many people this. I don't know how I got anything done <laughs> going into the office. The drive alone, it was it was an hour in the morning there, and potentially an hour and fifteen home. Yeah, blah. just two hours. There. Two hours of your life yep. wasted. We we will re- we were required to basically have a lunch every day with a developer, and depending on where it is in the in the in Nashville, you could be thirty minutes there, then you would have an hour lunch, and thirty minutes. That's two hours. So that's four hours right there between a lunch <laughs> every day and going home and going to work is four hours of wasted time. Well, Not commutes to... don't count for on the clock, so now well, you've got know, ten, a 10-hour right? day minimum. Exactly. Plus, they're like, yeah. oh, lunch, well, maybe we need an extra hour for that. Now you're at an 11-hour day, Yeah. and you're going to have... Yeah. Who needs oh. free time? You don't need physical yeah. fitness or joy or anything like that in Yeah, your life. yeah, physical well, fitness, <laughs> but also make sure you carve out your own personal time for your own development and growth. Because you yep. can't do that on company time. There's no ROI on that directly. This this benefits you. You should be doing it right. Like, well, so. and and that's and that's where we get into, you know, I, and that's why I'm really I'm I'm glad my CEO at Gun really understands like physical fitness and like and the need for. I mean, he told me he goes like, I want you to be working out during the day for your mental health, and no. so like that that was really cool. And so, and I, I think that type of stuff goes a really long way for retention, for mm-hmm. company morale. And, and it's those type of intangibles. Like if we're talking about like what, how to build a good remote culture, it's that type of stuff, right? It's your right. CEO saying, Hey, I, I support you working out during the day, or, you know, you don't have to come into, I mean, we have an office in Nashville. It's only a 25 minute drive for me, but I, th- there's no Why? expectation. Right. Yeah. Like or, everybody or knows a... I'm way more effective at home. Yeah, there's a two minute walk to your office, and, and we're adults, right? I guess have, that's the thing. It's like, it's yeah. like you're you're kind of managing like we're all in daycare, and I I think I read an article like early on during COVID about basically like it being like nine to fives in office were like adult daycare, 
Like, mm-hmm. are you doing your work? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Like, well, yeah, it, it's like, it gives middle management a purpose. And <laughs> yes, yeah. well, since that's I have, true. and I've been middle management a lot in my career, so I can definitely speak to that. And the potential imposter syndrome of like, what do I do? What am I doing if I don't know the status of everything on demand from my boss and feeling like I have to do that, right? That was very short lived in my life. I was either like, okay, I'm either going to operate differently and this is going to work out or I'm just never going to be a manager because yeah. that's not the life I want to lead. I do want to regress slightly though, but we've been on quite a few different tangents here. In a way, I want to be a uh, devil's advocate through this, regardless of what my personal opinions are, sure. because uh, damn mouth. yeah, return to office, I think is potentially a, it depends because it depends on a lot of things like from the company side, what are, you know, what are the incentives for them to do a return to office versus pursue a remote culture, remote company. I mean, I do believe that anybody that was like hired under the guise of you are, you work from home should maintain that regardless. I like agree. that's I the agree. employment yeah, contract here. Yeah, of course they're not. But I mean, I'm just saying like, that's the employment contract. And if you shift that, then everything is back up for negotiation in my view, I think. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah. You know, I accepted this well, based on should. these terms. Yeah. And if the terms change, then my side of the terms is different. To account right. for like that, salary should go up and yeah, you know, time whatever. loss and yeah. all of that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, because some of those incentives, I mean, Robbie is not shy about this and bringing it up. And like in an Amazon sense, it is purely to fill the building that they got tax it's the tax incentives breaks for. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right. Like, spot. so same thing. Right. So that, you know, it's it's that kind of incentive. It also depends on the kind of organization you have. Right. Like if you are tech, not a technology company you probably have like a way of working that's kind of well known people with technology are always like very online centric but maybe uh, you know maybe an e-commerce company or like a, a, a commerce company right selling retail or something like sure yeah can yeah. they all operate remotely i don't think so i, I no, actually the don't one think podcast so. i listen to they are the podcast is called Group Chat. Three guys are all entrepreneurs, founders. One of them has raised recently a fifty million Series B, which is really impressive to get that type of money in today's market. And I don't know if you want that kind of money, but I, I don't know the company. Like that's he, a lot of like, yeah. Yeah, sorry. he basically has built the company's called Ghost, which basically the way I understand it, it's like energy drink. No, not the energy drink. They basically host mm. all of the warehousing for big label brands if their warehouse doesn't have enough space. Nice. And so they kind of like are this conglomerate. And and but they've been talking about the same topic about return to office and working on site. And most of their folks are in in LA. Like like their right. their headquarters are in LA. What they do is in LA. Like it's not something you can do remote. You have a warehouse, you gotta be here. So yeah, I'm not saying that everybody needs to be remote, but I definitely think if you're a SaaS company and yeah. you know you develop a widget you know you don't you don't need folks in office you don't need that and and because there's a good chance as you scale a decent amount of your workforce is offshore near shore whatever else like right like what's fair is fair kind of thing yeah make it yeah make it culturally norm or if you make that promise i think those mm-hmm. are the, are the terms of and then you know whatever you say from today on and how you operate your business is fine because there's an understanding and agreement and when people come i don't know i'm i'm a like you said there are we're adults we should be trusted to be responsible and meet the agreements that we make and that is bi-directional and if those agreements need to change then you know we we have a discussion and then we decide what is the way moving forward? Not like, well, we'll fire you in this bad market if you don't do what we say. Like, right. oh, that it, that is also very like, you know, to the other side. It's like, oh, adult daycare. You're treating me like a child. Like, yeah. I can't make my own decisions to meet the responsibilities that we've agreed on. Like, okay, yeah. let me get in my car and drive to you. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. So you can make sure yeah. I do clickety-clackety thingy yeah. in front of well, you. Well, no one you know? even, no one's even what, like, 
all the people at Amazon, at least, I don't know about every floor. I know about my floor. Like there's <laughs> no one watching anyone. It's just about badging in and then you can do whatever you want. I've heard like people will run laps around like exercise and stuff, like not do work because they're just forced to be there. And like, I heard another conspiracy theory, which I think is interesting that like a lot of these CEOs of these big companies like owned a lot of like investments in corporate real estate. Oh, so sure. they like all oh, got together sure. and did a, they're doing a pump and dump right now of like everyone back to the office, raise my prices, sell all my shit. And then they're going to back off of it. Like yeah. afterwards, of course. Uh, which I think is plausible, like, yeah. you know, get their money and then screw over all the downtowns in one fell swoop. Sure. Oh yeah. Why would they care <laughs> otherwise? Yeah. Why would you care otherwise? To be honest, like, are you invested in the downtown Arlington community or no? No, I do, like, I think it's a big problem that's hard to solve. Like, I guess you could convert it all to residential space because, like, well, I still want to live yeah. near that so stuff. So they talked but... about this on the other podcast I listened to. Like, what do you do with those spaces? Ken Wheeler yeah. had, like, a thing that went crazy, like, turning these, like, old malls into these, like, really cool, like, 80 vibes, like, workplaces. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, there's a mall yeah, up dope. here in my area that's, like, not really doing anything. Like, I think there's so much room to do some cool stuff in these malls and stuff well yeah because the states are flush with choice so yes they could revamp existing buildings they could demolish and turn them back into parks or whatever else but or they can let them go into ruins and expand somewhere else which is the cheese cheaper higher profit option right like right. because we have so much space like we don't have like the more like European ideology or like, hey, Japan is on a, an island and is limited. So it's up or out or around, you know, like you can't really yeah. go. Uh, so no one's forced to like be like have more ingenuity around it. But right. yeah, right. Hell, hell yeah. Like, can you imagine like a mall's turned into, uh, you know, what are they? Gen Z, not Gen Z starter homes. That'd be awesome. Or you know, I would like, live in a mall. Uh, apartments That'd be dope. Or... Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. so much you could, so much you. Could. Yeah, make my house a hot topic. I'll move in. Yeah, you could, you <laughs> could do. They still, those still exist, which is hilarious. I want to be a Sam Goody or a Walden Books. I spent a lot of time mm. in a Walden Books as a yeah. kid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're at the mall. I'm gonna get a pretzel with cheese and going to Walden Books. Dude, Aunt, Auntie Anne's man. Mm. The best. We didn't. The best. I, well. You know, I'm very old, so we didn't have Auntie Anne's quite yet. When we got Auntie Anne's, shit was off the chain. But this was just like regular place that had soft pretzel, nacho cheese like product. And yeah, I would just tear that like up. Like from a stadium. Like that. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stadium stuff. Uh, in the Cincinnati area, our bratwurst are white. By the way. Wait, what? Yeah. If you. Bratwurst in the Cincinnati area are the true kind, and they are white. So All right, so I have pork. follow-up questions. Okay, I was going to say, like, what are the other ones made of that they're not white? So, like, like, everywhere else in the country, it feels like, where I have gone to the store and just, like, go to a Safeway or whatever, normal place, and, and buy, like, Johnsonville brats. Like, they're not. They're mixed, and they come out red. It's wrong. The right ones are white the real, real bratwurst are veal-based, but pork-based is, like, more common. Yeah, white brats. That's the title of this episode. White, white brats. brats. Yeah. I feel like if someone looked at the picture of us three and then it just said white <laughs> brats, that would, they would be like, yeah. That makes sense. Hold Checks on. out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that, that. Yeah, hold on here. I'm going to. All right. Just did a screenshot so I can maybe do it later. I'm not really, I don't really make memes or whatever. I just find them. But this might be worth, yeah. worth making. I have a meme I want to make, but I've been too lazy. You know, do you know the book Go Dog Go? Yeah. No. What? So it's like one of the, the things Mailing in there that's like, I remember this from being a kid. And like, it's like this lady's like, do you like my hat? And the other dog's like, I do not. And they're like, okay, goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I want to do that with like JavaScript frameworks and be like, do you like this framework? I do not. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, goodbye. You only like lit. Yeah. Because it's lit, bro. I, I am into lit. I haven't actually tried it, but it's it looks a lot like Ember, so 
I'm gonna have I to wish try. I wish Lit had a more lit website. Like a, that ain't lit. It looks like Microsoft Docs <laughs> or something. I thought it looked more like material design. Not better. Just saying. No. Anyway. Just saying. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down a, down a tangent. I mean, so I don't know why Robbie wrote this, but another, I guess, hot take is like, at what age does it become inappropriate for a grown man to dye his hair platinum blonde? I did not write that. Probably I don't sick. know why yeah. he wrote that. 35? I mean, <laughs> yeah, we're probably looking at, we're probably looking at maybe like, you know, 40. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I mean, how old was Eminem when he stopped? Let's look at that. Good. I think it was probably 40. But yeah. then it was like think, really probably, probably, awkward and stark me. the other way. The problem is, not the problem, I just get a lot of compliments like but from strangers on my on this hair color. So I mean, we're going to we're going to we're going to keep the train going until Yeah. Are you looking at us for style tips because I've certainly hope Not at all. Not yeah. at all. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> jokes? All. Jokes? Would you like jokes? Maybe. Uh, I'm go down that path. Maybe. Like this is all I'm here for. Should I quit? Maybe you should be the co-host. I don't know. <laughs> I'm already the co-host of way too many shows. I don't need to be yeah. co-host of another show. It doesn't show. even pay well, too, and everything else. Anyway, sorry. We do have other questions, other things. I am yeah. going to share. Do you want to go into any of these large text blocks or things about AI? Or Well, well that you, proves you can that AI that is good or not good. Okay. Oh, okay. Hot take number two. AI taking over initial screening process. More companies are using AI for initial steps in the hiring process, leading to debates around biases and fairness. Candidates also often find themselves interacting with chat chatbots and algorithms even before speaking to a human interviewer. Can you speak to this? Yeah. So, Ali, there's so much to unpack here. I uh, I think golly. I think the, that's for all the I Andy Griffith if, fans. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got that. I got that. That's a little before my time. You're showing your age there, the old Charles the Third, but. <clears throat> For me, I think if you are sending, so there's a lot of organizations that do this. And I'm so against it. If you are an organization and you are sending an eval as your first point of contact, or you are sending an AI chatbot thingy. I don't think we're ever going to replace the human aspect of hiring. I think that's what makes hiring and, and culture so important is the human aspect. It is interesting. I mean, we're we're trying to implement AI automation. Let's just call it what it is automation in some way, shape, or form at Gun, because our our problem at Gun is that you know we have like five hundred people apply to be on our platform a week. So and it's like, how react do you developers? Yeah, like how do you screen all those people adequately? Get them onto the platform, not have turds on the platform. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just there's just a lot there, and so. I, I, I think I'll be curious to kind of see how we're using it. I'm not, I'm not sitting as close to product right now as, as I did a few months ago. So I'll be curious to see how we do things. But I think as a whole, I think you got to keep hiring as much human as you feasibly can. You know, that's, that's why Kelly Vaughn and I's talk is humanizing hiring, right? It, it's is like, I think the companies who've had the best culture and the best hiring processes keep people at the center of it and they don't go super technical they they talk about the person as an individual they don't grill somebody and and i think that's going to stay consistent but again I, I am curious to see how like we use automation slash ai i'm curious on i think there's a lot of administrative stuff in the staffing world that can be done like for example one of the coolest things that i use that's ai is fathom the automated note taker. So I never had that at Vaco. So if I was talking to you at my last company, I would have to transcribe our conversation, like type it. And of course mm. I'd miss shit. Now I can just download this Chrome extension. They don't charge you. And you just, it, it like record, I don't know how they make money, but it records your calls and it summarizes them for you. So like really, really cool stuff from that perspective. I think, I think if, I think if you can implement more stuff like that, I think that could be cool in the hiring process, like sure. to help just the administrative bullshit. But you can't, you can't take the human. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's, yeah, exactly. There's the efficiency tools that are super useful. We're also very early days too, so to expect like a yeah. high quality outcome 
out of using any AI tool. I mean, Copilot's gotten better, but it's not perfect by any means. And I like how it saves me a few keystrokes. And I don't have to fix as much of its output as I used to, but we're still getting there kind of thing. So that, you know, that's an interesting point. Yeah. I I, I do, even if you have AI intervene, I always feel like this is inherently one of the issues with the technical aspect of developer interviews, which is it is always subjective to the hiring manager, right? The hiring manager guides the AI. The hiring manager creates the coding challenge, either in person, decides if it's on a whiteboard, decides if you take it home, decides what's an appropriate amount of time for you to spend unpaid to go through it. Like all of those things, at the end of the day for me, end up being subjective regardless. Yeah, it's 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 a crazy. So one of the things I'm really proud of at Gun is that we tech out pretty much everybody on our platform. We either do it beforehand. There you go. Yeah, just like do you guys that. do that? Do you do you bros you know, like we don't, do you see we each don't, other and you're like we don't we don't pew pew each other. We don't double barrel <laughs> each other with each other. I just yeah, when, right. every time you say Gun, there's yeah, like the missed yeah, opportunity yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes gun. and no. Hired Gun is where it comes in from. So. Basically, helps. Uh, where was I? What were we talking about? Chuck. Oh, hiring manager. I know. And oh, yeah. screaming, yeah. screaming. So yes, one one thing I'm really proud of at Gun is we tech out our people. Right, we have a former CTO of a publicly traded company on staff. We have like a former VP of engineering on staff. Like really, really technical guys and gals that screen out people before we submit them to your job. The problem is is that companies don't care. Like, it's unbelievable. Like, yeah. I, when I was in the staffing world, the, the, the argument with staffing agencies is, oh, they never, send us te- they, they never send us people that make sense, yada, 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 yada. And it's like now we actually have hiring managers tech people out. Companies still don't care. Like, yeah. literally one company, I'm not going to name names, if that company listens to this. Listen, I'm sorry. You well, know let's exactly go ahead. who you are. Let's they go ahead and assume they don't. A ton, a ton of engineers from us. Yep. They consistently rejected our people. They were like, "We don't. What is going on? We thought you guys tech people out." And they, and we go, "We are. We have our CTO teching people out." But like, for example, one individual, we submitted him over. Our CTO said, "Hey, listen, he's really, really good, but he gets distracted." He, I think he's got, I think there are some, I think there's some, some, some hints of ADD. You yeah, just got to keep him focused kind of thing or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you just got to keep him focused. He's, he's brilliant. Literally the reviews from the hiring manager from the other side were like, this guy's basically an idiot. <laughs> it's like, you, it's like, what? So like, again, I mean, there's such a disconnect, no matter how much that like, you know, Whenever I hear people bitch anymore about staffing agencies, about, oh, they don't send us candidates that are teched out, it doesn't matter because you're going to tech them out however you want to tech them out. It's, right. it, we've had this conversation so many times at Gun. It's been incredibly frustrating because we're so over it. You're firing off so many potential T-shirts that I am loving. I just want to say, t-shirts. well, first of all, dear listener. Chuck, all of that, it was t- T-shirts. Yeah, yeah te- tech me out. That is a fucking t-shirt if i've ever heard of one <laughs> tech me out tech me out i want that so first of all I, and i will get to the actual point but also i just want dear listener to know robbie's not a fucking idiot he did end up with a job at amazon and so it all worked out in the end like i know but people were concerned very good with very very out. good but yeah. like the people that don't like it's all arbitrary like it's based it's on arbitrary. the random words i happen to say during yeah. that interview and those words weren't good enough to be the level i was supposed to be so i got down leveled so yeah. like you know right. but even there's some people that said even worse words and didn't even get an offer so it's like yeah. but that doesn't mean that you aren't amazing at what you do it's just like how the person felt that day how you connected with them like what yeah. you said that made them feel a certain way about your capabilities and it's such bullshit like i don't know the answer but there has to be a better way that we can be like these people unions. are all evaluated on the same scale and like what'd you say <laughs> unions. unions unions for software or, developers good fucking luck man but yeah. 
this. I mean, like, yeah, it, it could work, but we could also all be out of jobs. Standardized, <laughs> standardized certifications. Something I mean, I definitely of that nature. I think there's got to be, I think there's got to be standard. And, and that's, and so like literally what we're talking about is why AI is never going to take over <laughs> because right, cause there's it no depends. standardization. Because it doesn't know what it depends means, right? Yeah, and there's no yeah. standardization. And you can tech someone out and then they go to, you know, Walmart. I don't know. I'm just big company. And then right. they're going to say, well, we have our standards and they have to pass our standards. And the, their standards might be company wide, might be team wide, might be whatever. Because even yeah, like knows? multi-billion dollar multinational companies when it comes to hiring and tech, especially when they're not tech first, will create their own standards within the team too. So, oh, you're going to work on the checkout process. Well, in checkout, we expect you to know blah, blah, blah. Well, cool. I don't know that. I mean, I've worked in e-commerce and I was really focused on single sign-on, but I guess like a cart process, I could probably figure that out because, you know, but... And that's one of the downsides, I think, of this whole, like, flush in the market. I mean, I think controversial point is I think that it's not all terrible for everyone per se. But I do think that, like, it allows companies now to start to really narrow their focus. They're like, we want you to have this so we experience were... in this yeah. language with this, this, and this in your stack. And if you're missing so... two of those, too bad. I've had this conversation and I tweeted this the other day is that we went from generalists being hot to now people want specialists. Yeah. So yeah. like, like that's, that's incredibly important for mis I, like I, people want companies want narrow right now. Yeah. And I think mm. from a advice to people in or considering the job market for career growth, I think that's the number one thing you're saying in this episode right now is find a lane and become an expert in that lane. Yes. And don't pick React because Yeah. Like, oh dude, that... I've talked about this so many times. Don't learn front end anymore. Back end's hot. Everybody needs yeah. back end engineers. Whenever we get a back end engineer, it's like who we got it. If we get a if you are a React, I'll say this on record. If you're a React developer, JavaScript front end developer and apply to Gun.io, you most likely will be rejected. Because you have a pool of plenty. We have yeah, it's a gazillion front-end folks who've already yeah. been teched out by us and have already worked on projects for us. We're good. We don't need any more front-end folks. We need right. back-end DevOps, cloud. Yeah, PHP's hot, baby. It's back. jQuery. What PHP about cybersecurity? Back. I actually think specialization we don't in do, things like security. We had an entire practice at my last company for security. I didn't really mess with that, but that practice obviously was booming. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think like the next like thing... That is you're going to need, because of AI being so pervasive, you're going to need a whole wing that's like... Trade schools. How do, how do we, like... Blue well, that too. But how do you, like, prove that a person is a person? Because we got a deep fake of you, and, like, you know, I think identity verification is going to be a, like, trillion-dollar market in, like, now, 100%. basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, like, doing UIs, like, the... If you want to be in the UI space, I actually would say you need to focus on specializations that I think are going to matter. Uh, let's see how AI goes with that. But like accessibility has always been like fucked off a bunch all the yeah. time and it still matters. And people are going to sue more and more and more over it over time. Like as everything advances, like the world is on the internet and the world is on a handheld device first. Like generations now are born into having that out of the gate and the tolerance I think is going to go down as they age. So I think yeah. if you really want to be on the UI side, then you need to, oh fuck. Hey, this is a magnet. This is like a coin magnet on the lid. Wait, what? Yeah, I was like, this moves. Oh no, oh, mine a, must um, be broken. It's the it's thing, a, it's a ball marker because it's like a golf course. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I did see that. So the Scotland, okay, so the Scotch aging is an ode to golf. Yeah, I, I actually saw that somewhere or whatever else. So, yeah, this is a ball marker. So, you know, kudos to them for marketing and all of that. Yeah. Kings Cove is a golf course. I think Peyton Manning is involved somehow. So real quick, because I, I know I'm going to have to bounce here in, in obviously like 10, 15 minutes. Yep. 
I, I do want to talk. We were going down kind of the direction with engineers. Also, too, like I, I, I just think I've been posting a lot about it lately. I want five about, minutes, like, though. Don't go a full fifteen. I want five minutes at the end, okay. regardless. Just blue collar jobs. Yeah, I think. I, listen, I think right now in this market, I think it's it's gotten rid of a lot of imposters in software. Mm -hmm. I think yes, I, there I, you I, go. I, 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 I think the last two years you could get into software, get paid six figures and just Google your way to a job. And yeah, lifestyle chasers. Yeah. Lifestyle chasers. Yeah. Sure. And so now I think I, I, I think it's weeded people out. I mean, I've seen people on Twitter talking about I'm leaving tech. I'm done. And like that triggers to me. It's like Great. like I still found a job in four weeks after I got laid off. Like I, there are oh. people who are still finding jobs pretty quickly. Yeah, it's not as plenty. You got to work. But I feel like there's a lot of people out there that were just imposters. So, but I do think this is a larger conversation that I, I think you're going to see a boom in trades. Closing. My wife and I have talked so much about modern day college institutions and all this stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be yeah. interesting. The problem farce. is if everyone becomes an electrician, then electricians make less money and then it becomes less attractive. To well, be an it, it, <laughs> so I posted it today and like one guy commented who went to school for electrical engineering. He goes, this happened. He goes, the problem is when I came out of school in 08, he goes, there's a ton of electrical engineers. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so he goes like, you couldn't get a job, but now we're there. Are, it's just all trends. Yeah. It's yeah. just all trends. Yeah, it is. yeah. Yeah. Guidance counselors guiding to what they perceive. Again, it's yeah. all subjective too, you know, all of that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a really great point is that there are many other like, but it's not remote, right? I, I know for years, I mean, okay, so I worked in on the web for 10 years before I ever got an opportunity to be senior and be p partially remote at that point. And right, like, and then as soon as I got those things and like, look like I made more money, I was a single dude. So of course, like whatever. I'll sleep on a futon and then go have amazing dinners and travel and whatever else. That, that was my life at that point. And so the perception was like, oh, this job unlocks this for you. Like you don't have to go to an office and looks like you have some decent money. But everybody forgets how much shit that I had to eat and go through to get to that point, right? And then, yeah. oh, yeah, maybe I'm interested in coding. You taught your – yeah, because I also – don't have a computer science degree. I went the long way and taught myself. And I also think potentially that path is gone, but who knows? It definitely has dried up quite a bit. You really got to like eat shit for a while to kind of get there. But, yeah. you know, the lifestyle appealed to a lot of people. And I think that that became pervasive, like the potential for being remote and the potential for like a pretty nice salary, even at entry level was there. Yeah. And for maybe better or worse, I don't want to, to me, I'm like, I paid my dues. Like everybody should pay their dues. If you, if you want this, get it, but you got to have a shitty life before you have a great life. So anyway. Yeah. That's true. In most careers, you can't just be right? rich day one. Like, Oh yeah. no, no. Shocker. I, mean, I, yeah. I mean, people are yeah. like, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I had to eat dirt for, five five years in the staffing industry before i you know started to make money so five yeah. six years yeah exactly like guess what i've had sports cars for a pretty long time but people forget that i had sports cars that were you know made in the 70s that i honestly a couple of times had to push down a hill to jump start with the clutch yeah. because of electrical issues like i that's a choice i made because yeah i loved that and i wanted that and what i could afford was one that I had to work on myself. And so that's a choice. So, yep. you know, you love it or you don't. The The love is what kind of gets you to success later, I think. But mm -hmm. what, I, what I really need to know about Taylor is like, you're a recruiter, you're all, you know, you're pew pewing all over the place now, but like, whatever. <laughs> I, I watch, I watch the vlogs. Bang, bang. Yeah. You are bang, bang, <laughs> bang, bang, chicken. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I just got canceled. Yeah, yeah. We're knew it was going to scratch that eventually. Yeah. This is why we're not live. <laughs> let's, let's all uh, oh, make sure we know that was Charles yet. William Carpenter the third. Well, that's <laughs> what, so. Here, there's a place called uh, Payway, and they have Bang Bang Chicken, good. and it is amazing. Yes, Dude, bang, exactly. Bang, bang, bone fish. Bang, 
Bang Bang Shrimp. So, oh yes, yeah. I think I've had that too. Yeah. Bang so Bang anyway. is like white people Asian mayonnaise and like Asian sauce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I I like some bulletproof Asian like too, aioli. which yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So people, which is aioli. yeah which is so funny because aioli is just like it's just like that's a word for mayonnaise. mayo where you charge more for it exactly. Yeah. Well, yep. traditional aioli is garlic and lemon or something like that, I think. Like, good aioli oh, is really? good aioli. Like a yeah. good garlic lemon aioli is really, really good. Yeah, it is actually Anyways. a thing. And then it's been, yeah, it's been stolen. Anyway, what the hell okay. else do you do in life, though? Like, what do you do? What are you interested in that isn't like technology, work, software, or your family? What are you interested in? Yeah, I mean, I so I play ice hockey. Yes. So me and my brother run an ice hockey team. We're sponsored by a local favorite team joint. Huh? Favorite team. My favorite hockey team. Yeah. I mean, in general, I don't really follow hockey that much, which is kind of crazy. I'm <laughs> one of those guys. So I'm, I love I'm very much of, so I, I think the NHL, MLB, NBA have issues with too many games. Right. And I mean, hockey got what 82 am- regular season and then you got playoffs. Oh. And then on top of that, the NHL, messed up how they do seating for playoffs now so it's like kind of weird and mm. so i'm not playoffs I mean, I are bullshit follow, luck anyway but yeah if, 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 if i follow two teams obviously i follow nashville and i follow the phoenix coyotes what? so i actually grew up yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so i so i i grew up my dad like bought some vhs's back in the day of like teams one of them was the new york rangers march to the stanley yes. cup in 94 and then which I was, was in awesome. high school. Then I was playing Mark, like Mark any, Messier, Mark Messier. Bold guaranteed, bold yes. guaranteed game seven. That was sick. Yeah. And then, yeah. and then I grew up loving Keith Kachuk and Jeremy Roenick for the Phoenix okay. Coyotes. And so, yeah. But now Phoenix Coyotes got some studs. Logan Cooley's fantastic. Obviously, Josh Doan, Shane Doan's kid just started y- last Whoa. week. Has had oh, a shit. hell of a game. And 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 jo- Shane Doan is like one of the point leaders for the phoenix organization i don't ever. even so, i don't even watch uh nhl anymore but i know those players just because yeah. like, people just talk yeah, about yeah, that. yeah so you gotta come out let's go to a game yeah i would love this. that love that phoenix coyotes i actually i wanted i've always wanted a jersey for christmas my parents never got me a jersey my wife bought me a jersey for christmas last year so <laughs> so i had the jersey nice. also too i i kind of keep up with the carolina hurricanes a little bit too because i grew up playing roller hockey in raleigh a lot of tournaments. Some we would always go to hurricane games they were playing. So I play ice hockey. Our team's really good. We only just lost our second regular. Uh, we we only lost our second game Monday. So we're like fourteen and two. Mm. So we're pretty good. We we travel nationally for tournaments and and do pretty well. And then also I've picked up golf a little bit. So my mm. my my, my father in law is is like a scratch golfer. He's like a seven year old like slow swing just. Mm crushes the ball he's a great teacher and i i almost my last game with him before the before fall last year i almost broke 100 like no bogeys or anything like Hmm. so he actually told me he was like if you actually had time to play goes you'd be a really good golfer so play golf i got some golf stuff for christmas for my wife so looking forward to playing see yeah that's what i do that's a good retirement plan honestly you get on the senior tour you can make a six-figure salary for 10 years yeah but my passion is content and community yeah, yeah, that's a work thing. I don't give board. a shit about that. <laughs> hey, I like work, man. I I write JavaScript like fourteen hours a day. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and he has a computer <laughs> yeah. science degree. So you know, the world is his oyster, and he makes choices. Hey, you got to pay the mortgage. Interest yeah, rates are bonkers, man. You do. Yeah, I don't because I'm selling my house. But anyway, that's, that's true. Another episode it must be nice. I'm selling my house and moving to Europe. Yeah, it's I'm an, not. It, no, you're we'll not. visit you're you. Stu- yeah, I mean, you you leave Virginia like once a year, I think. Listen, I'm never saying. changing my license. That's my big thing. I've had a Virginia license my whole life, and I'm not ever going to another state or country's DMV or whatever they call. It. <laughs> what a what a sword to fall on, you know? Like, where thanks. Hey, where are you moving again? Chuck, you're you're moving to Tuscany, right? Tuscany area, Italy? No, northern Como. No, you're you're gonna be living in Como. All right, my wife yeah. and I's next trip literally is Como, so we're I'll come visit you. Yeah, 
Stop Come by visit. George's house on the way. You, yeah, we'll have brunch at George's. I mean, Amal <laughs> makes an incredible cappuccino. I'm just saying. <laughs> From the Nespresso yeah. machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nespresso, exactly. You know, he's the spokesman for Nespresso in Europe, so it's very funny. Well, yeah, he probably kids... has like a paid person that just makes his coffee is the funny thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's not real <laughs> life, I don't think. Maybe yeah. on the road or something. Actually, Nespresso is pretty good. I, I, I have like... Nespresso. I like it. But yeah, I'm, I'm saying I, I've good. had I'm, some good I'm Nespresso. Not... I've had some yeah. good Nespresso. I'm yeah. not George I... Clooney rich, though. Like, if I was, I'd probably have some better coffee. <laughs> I think anyway. it's marginal. But, yeah, anyway. No, I got nothing else. What were you going to say? Me? Keep. Ch- I mean, yeah. I know we're at the end. I do want to follow up on a personal note uh, with baby number two coming. July 4th. Yeah. America, baby. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> wow. America. You got to name yeah. said baby Merca. Yeah. yeah. Merca if it hits the exact that. date. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're obligated. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, What? what kind of... What do you think is going to change with your life? Like, uh, you guys Every, prepared? Uh, everything. No, I'm not prepared. <laughs> Wife and I, we're we're in a really good spot, right? Our three and a half year old's like out of diapers, sleeping on her own. You know, she's just wonderful, and like we're just doing a bomb on it <laughs> 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 with 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 this new one. So I'm telling you, of course, the beginning is hard. Yeah, you know, I mean, the like, first oh, three yeah, months remember is the... just fucking brutal. Six months. Yeah, first six months, year. really. The cloud starts, the, the sky opens up around six yeah. months from what I remember. Six to 12 yeah. months is is the sweet spot. Yeah. That's yeah. a good start. Once they're both out of diapers and they're friends, you're welcome. You've done yeah, a service to yourself. Other. Well, and so our yourselves. daughter, yeah, yeah. So my daughter has like really like latched herself onto our corgi. Like mm-hmm. that's her, that's become her BFF and she drags him everywhere and he's such a good dog. He just takes yeah. it. <laughs> so I, I, so I can see, I think, I think once baby boy is, uh, you know, big enough to play, I think. Uh, oh yeah. yeah it's going to, it's going to get great and it's going to just get better and better. Is it too early to suggest the name Charles? But Charles is definitely not it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> have a list of like six people. Robbie would, I think, be closer than Charles, to be yeah. totally honest with you. Hey, Robert's Robbie. the number one name since like 1920. Is it real? Mm. Yeah. Things mm. I learned hanging out with you boys. Yeah. Bobby. <laughs> Bobby. The Bobby Dozen. Bobby Dozen. But no, we're, hey, we're, we're excited. Dezen. We're we're excited. So it's going to be good. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I'm moving out of this office. I'm going downstairs. I'm going to have a pretty sweet little office set up. Very excited about it. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's nice. awesome. Good for you. Yeah, man. For those, I don't know, two to three minutes. You really did the work. Did all the work. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Yeah, we're about at time. Anything you want to plug or mention before we end? I mean, as always, so I have a podcast, Guidance Culture 2.0. You boys were on it here recently. It was a great time. You know, it's a it's a tech engineering podcast focused on the kind of the, the job search career side of things. So check that out. All my social media handles are at T-Desson, T-D-E-S-S-E-Y-N. So that's all I got. Cool. Boo. Uh, yeah, I always forget to mention we have merch. Check us out on whiskey.fund if you want to support this podcast. And thank you for listening. If you liked it, please subscribe. Leave us some ratings and reviews. And we will catch you next time.